Yeah. I mean, that's whenever I do see any sort of detractors of the work you're doing or any of this sort of work at all, it always is like, you know, there's an ethical question about privacy, consent. You know, once I'm in the system, who, how is somebody not going to use it against me? Of course, mm -hmm. my answer always is if you're not doing anything wrong, you don't have anything to worry about, you know? Um, now, do you have any arguments for or against that in any direction? I can only imagine it. Obviously, you want as much DNA as possible, but... Yeah, well, you know... Uh, so, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what my, my mom says. So she always says to me, like, you know, she's adopted anyway. So I don't think that she has that much commitment to her biological family. So she doesn't know them, but, um, she'll always say, you know, if somebody in my family did a crime, I want them to get caught anyway. But you have to, I think one thing that we have to be careful of is what is considered a crime. Right now, um, in the United States, we can use investigative genetic genealogy. This is per the Department of Justice guidelines mm -hmm. for violent crimes. That includes aggravated assault, homicide, rape. Um, we can also use it on unidentified remains. So, um, you know, John and Jane Doe cases. But let's say tomorrow uh, they decide that shoplifting is going to be a crime that we use investigative genetic genealogy for. Right. For me personally, that would make me quit this job. 